Hey, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to a short debunking video. This video is for Brett Weinstein because Brett actually responded to my video about him. I'm pleasantly surprised he actually did it. It only took him about six months and the response involved two non-immunologists while I had three immunologists in my video, but who's counting? It was also two hours and 40 minutes long Jesus Christ, I could watch Dune in that time. But in terms of content, it was underwhelming. In fact, a little bit after I made my first video back in October, challenging Brett to respond to the immunologist that I gathered, I wrote a little note in my phone, just predicting what I think Brett would bring up to try to counter my points, because all of these conspiracy theorists and anti-vaxxers say the same thing, and I just thought I'd predict what he would use to address my points. And I was right. So the content of the response was very predictable, and easily debunkable if I were to go through the entire two hour, 40 minute thing. But for now, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to say, Brett, I could do that. I could make a very thorough response to that entire podcast and go through every single claim and point that you guys got wrong, which is most of them. Or we could talk face to face or at least camera to camera one on one. And we can hash this out. I'd rather do that than go back and forth with these long videos. If you're interested in your audience getting the truth and learning about these topics, I suggest we do that. So the choice is yours, Brett. You can pick which one you want to do. And I'll say in about a month, if I don't hear from you, I'll take that as you don't want to talk on a recorded conversation. And I'll start planning on doing my video to respond to your two hour and 40 minute podcast. You couldn't make it shorter. But in the meantime, I'll just make two comments on the podcast that I thought I would just make right here because they were so egregiously wrong or notable. And the first is that I'm glad you acknowledged that you were incorrect about the terminology you used when you used the words autoimmunity and transcription. The context here, of course, is that Brett called the reactions to the vaccine, i.e. myocarditis, etc., autoimmune reactions. And they're not autoimmune reactions because autoimmunity is reacting to self antigens and immunity is reacting to non self antigens. Pretty simple concept, but you got that wrong. And you admitted that you got that wrong. You also admitted that you got your use of the word transcription wrong because you are saying that MRNA vaccines are transcribed when the correct terminology is they're translated, meaning that ribosomes read the MRNA and use that information to make proteins. So good for you for admitting you got those wrong. However, you very consistently brush this off as semantics. And Brett, I want to make it clear that it's not semantics. You were using these terms incorrectly. They have meaning. And when you're using them incorrectly, consistently, it shows that you don't have an understanding of the subject matter. And that is a theme throughout the entire podcast and frankly, your entire coverage of COVID and COVID vaccines. My favorite part is when we are pointing out that you consistently use the word transcription incorrectly, you, <laughs> you brush it off again and you say that biology is hard. Point is, as long as they're going to be raising minor quibbles about me, I guess my point would be biology is tough. There's a lot of terms of art and, uh, Brett, come on. Transcription and translation are concepts that high school biology students learn. You have a PhD in evolutionary biology. There's no excuse for you consistently getting that word wrong. Just own it and don't make excuses. The second point I want to just briefly address is you guys seem to not really read the literature that I cited in my previous video. And the example of that that stood out to me was when you guys were commenting on the cytokinopathy paper, which explains the mechanism of myocarditis following COVID vaccination. In it, the paper explains that an increase in particular cytokines, which are immune signaling molecules, causes T cells to infiltrate cardiac tissue and cause damage. You guys weirdly seem to think that this is vindication of Brett's hypothesis, as if we didn't read it. Uh, together, our results demonstrate upregulation of inflammatory cytokines and corresponding lymphocytes with tissue damaging capabilities, suggesting a cytokine dependent pathology which may further be accompanied by myeloid cell-associated cardiac fibrosis. I mean, if that's not on point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, 
it states exactly my hypothesis. But I'll repeat, Brett's hypothesis is that the SARS-CoV-2 vaccination mRNA gets into cardiomyocytes, produces spike, and then those cells get destroyed by the immune cells. That is not what's happening here. There are several different kinds of cardiac damage that can be caused by the immune system, and there are different mechanisms for each kind. This paper ruled out several, including the one that Brett hypothesizes. They state this pretty clearly if you actually read the paper. I think it's most simply explained by this sentence right here. The authors say that using T-cell receptor, that's TCR, repertoire analysis, we uncovered that these cells did not show evidence of monoclonal expansion, suggestive of an antigen-independent, cytokine-dependent activation after vaccination. In other words, the cells that were present in really high numbers that they think are responsible for the myocarditis and were infiltrating the cardiac tissue are not being driven by antigens. They're driven by cytokines, immune signaling molecules, hence the title of the paper, Cytokinopathy. This is an observation for which there is extant literature that is cited in the paper. T-cells can infiltrate cardiac muscle for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it can be beneficial, sometimes it can cause harm. It doesn't have to be because the cardiomyocytes are producing antigen that the T-cells are recognizing. And in this case, it's not antigens that the cardiomyocytes are producing. You just clearly didn't read the paper, Brett, and I guess neither did your guests. So if you want to give your audience the truth and prove to them that you are a critical thinker who is honest and able to admit when he is wrong, then let's hash this out because you are still getting a lot wrong. And I'm just scratching the surface here. There's way more that you guys got totally wrong. Well, that's going to do it for that short video. I put some links to some research that I referenced in the description of this video if you want to check it out. But anyway, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to catch me next time where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then. Thank you.